I don't know if you've seen one of these things in person, but if you have, it looks absolutely tiny. But can it print full helmets? What's going on? I'm Dylan with Saturday Morning Props. First video with the new name change. I used to be Quest for Nostalgia. Went through it. People struggled with the number four or writing out F-O-R and then nostalgia was hard for some people to write. So I went ahead and changed it to Saturday Morning Props. Hopefully it captures the same feeling and I hope you guys stick with me throughout the change. As always, a huge thank you to my Patreon members over on patreon.com slash quest for nostalgia. Uh, thank you so much for supporting me and allowing me to do this stuff. But let's get into the video about the P1S, how tiny this thing looks and will it do some helmets and also how to orient the helmets to get them to fit. So I finally gave into the hype of the P1S. I was using the Elgu Neptune 3s and if you follow me on anything else, you saw I've had a horrible time with the reliability of them. Issues with four different ones, just after a miserable time with those printers. And so I needed something different. I went over to Micro Center because they had these in stock and I was like, all right, let me just grab one of these that we can take it home day of, you know, not have to wait for shipping or anything like that and go get one. Well, when I got there, they were also running $200 off the K1 Max, which is a 300 by 300 build plate, which is bigger than this thing here. And it put it at exactly the same price point. So it made it super hard to decide P1S where it has really good reliability. You know, people love this thing, but a small build plate or the K1 Max where the build plate's big and I would love that but the reliability and the reviews are all over the place. After all the issues with the Neptune 3s I was having, the reliability factor is really what pushed me over to this. But seeing this build plate, this tiny little thing here, oh my gosh, I was super worried about like, how was I gonna get anything to fit on this thing? But I mean, clearly I went with the P1S over the K1 Max. and I've been very happy with that. I've always had printers with a 300 by 300 build plate or more. So I started with the CR10 line of printers and I would buy more and more CR10s. I had the CR10S, the CR10, CR10 V2, all of these different things. So they are always 300 by 300. And then with the Neptune 3 Plus and Max, it was even bigger. You guys know me for making helmets and things like this. So a printer that couldn't do full size helmets didn't really sound worth it to me. I don't print, you know, flexi dragons and things like that. I don't do a lot of small stuff. And if I was going to, I'd probably do resin printers. I have a very generic middle of the road head. My head is a seven and one fourth hat size to seven and three eighths if I have a lot of hair. Uh, it's about 23 inches to 23 and a quarter inches. Um, and so most modelers, their helmets at 100% fit me almost perfectly. And so I have a very generic middle of the road head. Like this whole suit is printed in 100% from head to toe. Uh, everything fits me like that. And so I was wondering like, can that happen in this printer? If you have a larger head than that, you're gonna struggle for sure with some different prints. I would definitely say something about a 23 and a half inch head circumference around where a hat lies would probably be the person that could maximize this printer. But then, and everything below that, you guys can use it easily. But if your head size is a little bit bigger than that, if you're pushing that 24 inch range, I definitely think you might need to go to something bigger. For me, I can print 99% of helmets on this thing. Clearly things like Vader and Stormtroopers and stuff like that are gonna struggle a little bit. You know, they're not gonna be able to fit there. You're gonna have to split them, but you can keep a bigger printer for things like that as well. But for the Rangers, all but the Green Ranger have been able to fit on this printer and the quality is just outstanding. And then all of these Spider-Man helmets by DO3D and Yo Studios and things like that, man, those things all fit great. I've been able to go up to something like 103%. So if you have a little bit larger head, you can definitely do things like the Rangers for sure on this printer. I'm going to be doing a Raimi Spider-Man here helmet on the channel here soon. This is by DO3D.com. Uh, you get 20% off with code Q4N20. And they also have amazing Ranger files where they're now also taking off the buckles. They had fake buckles on there and now they're taking them off, which is awesome. So you can do either version. But yeah, as you can see, with a diagonal orientation on here, you can see the Blue Ranger fits absolutely fine. And then these helmets do fit my head. This isn't like I'm just showing you a print and those aren't actually wearable. The Spider-Mans fit great and the quality is just top notch on this thing. If you've been liking the content, subscribe and hit that like button. It really helps the channel out so that we can keep growing. Even if you got this printer and you had to split your files into other pieces to do it, the quality on this printer is so high, hiding those seams is so easy. 
I don't know how the quality is so amazing on this thing, but even things like a 0.2 resolution on this compared to something else is just wildly different. Super, super good. Let's look at the bamboo slicer where I can show you how I orient these things. I always go diagonal. You have to lean the helmets back just a tad to where it stops going into the shaded part. And then at a 45 degree angle, that's gonna be your biggest volume of being able to maximize this build plate. The only thing with this printer though, is there's a piece that will cut the filament for you when you're unloading and loading in filament. And there's a little white box that is not available for use on the build plate. I think there's a weird way to turn it off and G code and stuff like that, but you, I don't mess around with that thing. Unfortunately, that does block some of the helmets sometimes. Um, but usually if you turn it around the opposite 45, it gets rid of it. Hopefully this helps take out some of the fear of buying this printer. You know, the P1S and the P1P have a much better price point, but that build volume is definitely scary. Uh, but if you have something that, you know, is like a 23 and a half inch head and below, you're going to be really good and you're going to be able to print out like 99% of your helmets and the quality is just so good. I wish I had a video exactly about helmet sizing when I was trying to debate between the P1S or the K1 Max. If you need a video about how to size helmets, check out my video on that after this one. As always, I love you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.